So Psalm 91, so this is what the Lord had me go to. In Psalm 91, he said to me, I want you to focus on verse 1, because I was just getting so disheartened. And it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable. Stable, not confused, stable. Not frightened, not, not fleeing, stable. And fixed under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no foe can withstand. You hear me? So dwell, I, was, I said, the Lord said to me, what does dwell mean? And um, so dwell means to abide as a permanent resident or to inhabit for a time, to live in a place, to marry, to settle, to be in residence with. Okay, so what does that mean? That means we're not leaving God's presence. That means that we're settled, we're abiding, we're worshiping. See, I have to get the mindset of the Lord over all this. More than ever, we have to know how to hear God. We have to sit in his presence. We can't go back, you know, a lot of us, or I've said it too, go back to normal. Well, the Lord says, no, 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 honey, your normal is not going to be the busyness. Your normal is going to be that lingering, that spending time at my altar, that pre in, in my presence. See, we have to dwell in that place. And my thing is, when I hear something or see something, it's like, Lord, what do you say about this? There was a dream that recently was released by uh, some brother, and I forget where. But I didn't listen to all the dreams. But when I heard just a portion of it, it didn't bear witness with me. And, and so, again, when you're dwelling in that presence, when you're dwelling and hearing him, and then you want to hear what others have to say about it, but it just didn't click with me. We're not doom and gloom. God has a plan for us. Yeah, things may get shaken, but, but God wants us to know, trust me, look to me, don't rebel. And we'll, we'll go through some of the scriptures. So we have to avoid becoming so str extremely stressed and overworked and burdened by what's happening that, that we are not hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So Jeremiah 29, 29 13 says, and you seek me and find me. And you will search for me with all your heart. See, God is saying, listen, even in this time, whose voice is louder? Don't allow the voice of the world or the voice of your peers be louder than what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That's for all of us here. And so he wants us to prosper in every area. In John 2, it says, beloved friends, in the passion, I pray that you are prospering in every way. And that you continually enjoy good health as your soul is prospering. If our soul is not prospering, we're not moving forward. See, I'm not going to just go by what everybody else says. I have to still inquire of the Lord. I have to meditate on the Word. Now, I'm teachable. I'm open to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and to what others, you know, my peers. And we dialogue about this stuff. But, but I need to get a revelation. And, and, man, it's so incredible when you get before the Lord and you just start reading the Word, the peace. I tell you, when I just started, I just went back to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm, I just shared my heart. I'm really troubled by everything. And, and, you know, like, how do we move forward? What do we do? There was a supernatural peace that came over me. And I, and I knew what, and, and I wrote some of the things down that the Lord was speaking to me about. But he said, listen, I want you to lean in closer than ever. There's a scripture in Psalm 25. It says that he will guide you with the singleness of his eye. That's close to close contact. You know, my kids, when they were little, my husband and I would just look at them, give them a look. And they knew you better sit down. <laughs> Or, or come near me or whatever. But he wants to guide us that we know even the, the look in his eyes as to how he wants to direct us. Yes. So the condition of our soul is a reflection of our life. So our minds need reformation. I've been crying out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I want my mind reformed. I want my mind to be so like you because the Bible does say that we have the mind of Christ, but we don't always act that way. But I want my mind to be reformed. I want to get more and more insight and revelation. And I've just been really enjoying my time meditating on his word. I mean, I always have, but God is bringing us into a whole new understanding of where we're at because we've never been here before. I was thinking about when, and I never really thought about it this much, but when the, when the Israelites, when the leaders had to go check out what's in the land, that's like us right now checking out what's in our land, what's happening. Right? And they saw the riots. They saw COVID. They saw people getting killed. They saw it. And they came back and said, forget it. We can't deal with this mess. Well, and that's what some of us are saying. The Lord's saying, no, no, no. Get a right perspective. Let your minds be reformed with my word. 
because we are well able to take the land, to, to overthrow the giants. We are well able, but we have to be single focused. Our minds have to be fixed upon the Lord. What does the Lord say? Not what does my friend say? Not what does my culture say? What does the Lord say? Yes. Proverbs 12, 25 in the Passion says, anxious fears brings depression. How many of you are depressed right now? How many are, I, I heard, I was watching something on TV and they said that the suicide rate is off the charts since COVID. That's why we need a savior. Anxious fears brings depression, but a life-giving word of encouragement can do wonders to restore joy to the heart. His word brings joy to our heart. The word is corrected, but it's, it brings joy to our heart. So we have to be fully agreeable with the word of God. And I'm grateful for the word. I am. And Hebrews 11.1, 1, I love, I love, I study faith a lot. I encourage you, study faith. We need to have our faith so built up at this time more than ever. And so in Hebrews 11.1 1 in the Amplified says, Now faith is the assurance, the title be, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen. See, we call those things which be not as though they are. We call in peace. We call in restoration. We call in healing. Yes. See, we don't just go by what we see. It's, we don't deny what we see, but that's not going to have final say over, my, over what I'm doing and, and what, um, you know, what I'm going through. The Word does. So it says the conviction of the reality, um, the faith comprehends as fact. I love that. Faith comprehends as fact. What cannot be experienced by the physical senses, all right? And we know that, and I don't know if I have it here, but in Hebrews eleven six 6, it says it's impossible to please God without faith. So remember what I, I'm going to keep saying this. Enemies after our faith. He does not want us walking in faith. He wants us to walk in doubt and unbelief. So, oh, I do have it. So without faith, it's impossible to walk with God and please him. Impossible. For whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists, that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seeks him. Yes. Now, if you're battling with unbelief, repent and ask the Lord, like that guy in the Bible said, Lord, I, I, you know, help my unbelief. I want to believe, but help me. But how do we get help by that? Well, by daily time, having our daily time with the Lord, but have communion, read the word. And then, you, then renounce the, well, every time you're downing, renounce that and just say, Lord, give me perspective. Help me with it. When you become so one with the word, it's a supernatural thing when you're reading the Bible. When you become so one with it, it overrides it. It really does. It overrides your, your doubt and unbelief. So um, I, I'm going to pass a, cup, a couple of scriptures. Um, you know, I wrote, I was... Um, in Matthew, in Mark, and I was paralleling all the areas where Jesus told the people, his disciples, to have faith. But I'm going to just read this portion. In Mark 11, 22 and 23, and I know you all know this, but I'm going to read it. Jesus replied in the Passion, let the faith of God be in you. Of God. See, when you're in his presence, it's God's faith. It's not you trying to do it. Let the faith of God be in you. Listen to the truth I speak to you. In other words, Meditate on the word. Listen to what the word is saying. If someone says to you, this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. So you have to be, again, dwelling. Let's go back to Psalm 91. You have to be so one and so united with the word that the word is more of a reality than what you're dealing with. Yes. See, and that's possible. That's what he's, in, he's encouraged us to do. Faith is strong, in Strong's definition it means, faith means conviction, confidence, trust, belief, reliance, trustworthiness, and persuasion. There is a confident trust, even though there's times that I have trusted God, and even though I, I tr was trusting, I was still had uh, Italians say we had Ajuna inside. I was, I was concerned. I, I was nervous. I was fearful. Like, but sometimes it seems like you're not in faith, but I said, no, I don't care what I feel like. I'm moving forward. I'm choosing to trust God. There's been times, you know, even in sowing money, 
when the Lord's told me to give X amount of dollars. I'm like, oh, boy. And so, but I said, Lord, I choose to trust you, you know, and, and it's like, wow, it's just such liberty comes as a result of that or trusting for healing. You know, you all heard us talk about our testimony with our son when the doctor said he was dead. My God says he's alive. Yes. There was such a war. And I'm telling you, with this COVID thing, I'm not denying that situations haven't happened. I, we know of people that have passed. But I'm not going to allow that to dictate how I move forward. Yes. Do I trust God or not? Yes. And so I'm not going to be foolish, but I know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me about him being my healer and my deliverer and my restorer. And so, again, I'm not going to allow certain people in government dictate to me how my life and my health is going to go. The word of God is. The Bible says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. And the Lord says that he is the Lord God, my healer, my deliverer, my restorer. We've got to allow the word. So it says here in Mark eleven twenty two and 23, let the faith of God be in you. Listen to the truth. Oh, I read this. I'll read it again. Listen to the truth. I speak to you. If someone says to this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. Yes. You understand? That's so resolute. That is confident. It's like, I'm not doubting that. If I said it, if he said it, it's going to happen. So we have to have that trustworthiness. Now, if you're not there, I want to encourage you. You can get there, yes. right? You can get in the word, meditate in the word. That's the way it comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's up to us to develop our faith. We are, um, you know, responsible for our own development. Listen, you can be saved 20 years and have two months faith. But you have to, you have to decide where you're at. I just know that I want to keep moving on. I don't want to stay stuck. I don't want to just keep focus on all the giants in the land. Lord saying, if I can be like a David, take that stone and, and knock him out and, and, and throw that stone in his head. He said, I don't come to you. He says, I come to you. I'm not coming to you in my flesh. He says, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord whom you have defied. And the enemy out there and the government and certain people, it's not. Listen, the, the government's not the enemy. The devil's the devil. Remember who our fight is against. But he's saying, I'm coming in the name of the Lord, and we are coming in the name of the Lord whom the enemy has defied. And there are people who have been very deceived that have been having an antichrist agenda. And see, the church has arise up and say, mm -mm -mm, you're not crossing this boundary line. And so, you know, fear cancels our faith, and fear brings doubt and unbelief. That's what he's after. So if you're really struggling with fear, when I'm getting afraid, I go back into the word. I'm like, Lord, what's my problem? Why am I getting so caught up in this? Is there a root in me or, or am I just getting so caught up with everything that's out there? And then I get back to the meditation of the word. You see, and that's what brings deliverance. I love, 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 love this scripture. But the end, I wrote here, the enemy is limited in attacking the church, so he attacks our faith. If he can get us to be carnal, secular Christians, that's his goal. <clears throat> but in 1 John 5, 4, in a message, I love this. The power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. Do you hear me? Yeah. Do you think the world needs Jesus? Yeah. Do you think the world needs an awakening and revival? Yeah. Listen, I'm going to read it again. The conquering power that brings the world to our knees is our faith. Do you realize why the enemy is going to go after our faith? Yeah. Because you can't tell me anything different. When I'm standing in faith, when I heard a word from the Lord, you're not going to tell me anything different. So no unbelief. We, we focus on how terrible our situation is, and that's what you focus on, you empower. So if you're focusing on all the 14,000 deaths of COVID that some of them, I think, is embellished a little bit. But, you know, they're constantly saying, why don't you put out how many people are healed? Why don't you put out how many people are doing well with the medicine that's out there, with the z pack and the, the malaria medicine? Why don't you put that out? No, we have to exaggerate everything about how everybody's dying. Well, not everybody's dying. Some people have died. Yes. But come on. So what about abortion? Let me go there for a minute. There are more aborted babies than there were of people who died of COVID. Let's go there. So come on. So no unbelief. Unbelief comes by hearing and focusing on things contrary to the word of God. 
That's not going to be my game. I'm going to focus on what the word says. In Psalm 107, 20, it says, He sends forth his word, and he heals them and rescues them from the pit and the destruction. That's God's plan. And so even as we're praying and releasing the word of God, it, it, it brings deliverance and it rescues people from the pit and destruction. We send forth the word. There is power in our mouths. This is the decade, the era of the mouth. Our decrees are powerful. And so if he can, if he can um, what do you call that, cause mixture of doubt and unbelief, that's what he wants because then it's not sent, being sent forth and delivering people from the pit of destruction. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I, I have a couple of portions that I was going to go through in Matthew and Mark, but I'm going to skip that because I really want to get to Isaiah. But I want to read a word that, that Chuck Pierce prophesied. There's two words that he prophesied. This one was in October of 11 of 2018 in Tennessee. And Chuck said, excuse me, over the next two years, you will see one of the greatest separations in the nation. It will almost look like the Civil War has come but it's just that God is going to have to define the separation so we fully understand it. It will cause his people filled with the spirit to rise up as one. See, and it says here, it is what is going to happen to us. We won't have time for this racism issue or political squabbling. Now, that was in 2018. It says we won't have time for all that because we're going to have to be one in him as a people. The voices with the anointing, we're going to have to learn to follow after, anoint, after the anointing and be able to see the anointing because the separation is going to be greater and greater. Are you hearing me? Yeah. That's why we have got to be one. We've got to be one in spirit. We have to know our God and do great exploits for him. We have to walk in faith. We're a great 10 years ago or 12 years ago, the Lord had given me a word that he's raising up a Gideon 300 army. And I, and I felt like that was worldwide. People who, you know, remember Gideon was all battling fear and worry when you read through uh, Gideon, uh, Judges 6, I believe. And so uh, initially when he was going to war, I think he had like 20,000 men. And the Lord dropped it down to 300, the remnant. Are you hearing me? There's always been a remnant, a smaller number. But those who believe in their God, who don't look to the left nor to the right, will do great exploits. See, we have to rise up and be one in him. We have to rise up as people of faith. Then Chuck prophesied in August 19 of 2019. He said, we are entering into an era, a decade called speaking forth your liberty. We need to speak forth our liberty. We need to say, devil, you are not taking our country over. There will not be, I prophesy, we will not be taken over by socialism or Marxism or communism in Jesus' name. We will be a free nation. We are going to see much upheaval coming in the earth realm that you'll just have to hang on for dear life because there will be so many issues rearranged because of the voices that are coming forth. It's what the whole next decade is about, and each year will have a different significance of how we speak. Now, we have gotten, you hear the word, the prophets, the Bible says in Amos 6 that, that the Lord doesn't do anything unless he reveals it to his prophets. Now, I know there are many other prophets, but Chuck is our prophet. We're, we're aligned with Chuck Pierce and Cindy Jacobs and Dutch Sheets. And, you know, but they have been prophesying. And so we have got to be people of faith. I can't reemphasize this enough. Fear is not your God. Okay? Unbelief is not your God. Doubt is not your God. God is saying, I will always make a way of escape for you. I'll help you out of every situation. See, just ask him to help you. But, but make a decision. I'm going to focus on the word. Stop with running here and there and everywhere. Get your behinds down and sit and stay before the Lord. Start out with 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Just start if you're not doing it. But God is saying, listen, I want you to come into that secret place with me. So here's where I want to end. I don't even know what time it is. Okay, so... This is really good because we're going to go through uh, Isaiah 36 and 37, and I'm going to read you out of the, the Passion Translation. Now, we know that um, Hezekiah was a king, and um, there, was, there was wars going on. How unusual, huh? And so there was a commander, Sennacherib, 
And he was after Hezekiah, and there was, there was war going on. There was other armies that were joining forces with Sennacherib. But I want to show you the dialogue as to what the enemy through Sennacherib was saying to Hezekiah, who was the righteous king at the time. And it's so similar to what we're going, on, going through now, okay? So in Isaiah 36, it says in verse 4, Sennacherib's commander said to them, Tell Hezekiah, this is what the exalted king, the king of Assyria says. What makes you so confident? And this is very similar to what the media and others out there are saying. What makes you so confident that your God is able to defend you? In verse 5, it says, you have a strategy and a defensive might, but mere words are no match for my army. Hear what I'm saying. This is, what, this is what's out there. The media is saying, government's saying, and who are you trusting for help that you rebel against me? The government's saying that. I know you're relying on Egypt, that broken staff full of splinters. If anyone leans on it, it will pierce his hand. Pharaoh himself, king of Egypt, is like those splintered staff to those who put their trust in him. But you tell me you're trusting in Yahweh, your God? Yeah, we are trusting in Yahweh, our God. Verse 6 says, for Hezekiah went around destroying every sacred altar from the land. How about that? What are we destroying in our land? Listen to this again. Hezekiah went around destroying every sacred altar from the land. Didn't he insist that Judah and Jerusalem had to worship only at this altar in your temple? Well, see, the enemy is trying to destroy that. That's the reverse there. Then verse 13, it says, so the commander stood and shouted out in a loud voice in Hebrew, to the men listening on the wall, the watchmen on the wall, hear the words of the great king Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, for he has sent me with these words, don't let Hezekiah mislead you, for there's nothing he can do to save you. And so let me just say uh, it like this, don't let your God mislead you. This is what the enemy is trying to say to us, for there's nothing he can do to save you. Well, I beg to differ. Amen. For my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever ask or think according to that which works within us. So it goes on to say, I jump down to verse 15. It says, he's saying, don't be deceived when he tries to persuade you to trust in Yahweh. You know, that's what uh, the enemy could be saying to you right now as we're preaching. As we've been preaching the word, don't let them deceive you. They're so full of it. They don't even know what they're talking about. They're in la-la land like God really exists. What did, May, what did Governor Cuomo say? God did not do this for us. We did it. Right? So don't be deceived. Huh, right? When he tries to persuade you to trust in Yahweh, saying Yahweh will come to our rescue and our city will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Hezekiah. For the king of Assyria says to you, make your peace with me and surrender so that you may continue to eat from your own grapes, figs, and drinks the water from your own cisterns. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own, it is a land of grain, wine, bread, and vineyards. So, yeah, yeah, communism. <laughs> let me pay all your bills. For, let me pay all your college bills. Let me take over everything for you. And then when I do, you will have no say. Verse 18 says, don't be deceived by Hezekiah's empty words when he says to you, Yahweh will save us. Has any God ever saved a nation from the mighty hand of the king of Assyria? Uh, yes, our God has. Where were the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where were the gods of wherever? Did any God save your northern kingdom of Samaria from me? Where is there a God that can save its people from my mighty hand? Well, I'm going to let you know. But they were silent, and no one answered him a word. We cannot be silent. The silent majority does not win. We need to be a voice. For our king, for it says, for King Hezekiah had ordered them, do not answer him. Now you jump down to 37. It says, when King Hezekiah heard what the commander has said, he tore his robe, put on sackcloth, and went to the temple of Yahweh. That's what we're doing. Amen. We're fasting. We're going to start our fasting and praying. There's a firewall that uh, Patricia King had a dream about, and then um, I, I, there's a whole bunch of people involved. We're going to start our prayer and fasting um, 6 a.m. On Tuesday morning, we're going to pray. And then I, I just want to encourage everybody to fast. We need to get on our faces. 
says, be strengthened in him, okay? And, and decree what he's saying for our nation. And so listen to this. So he's fasting and praying, and he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Sheba, the royal scribe, and the leading priest, and all the clo clothed in sackcloth, to the, prophets, to the prophet Isaiah. Verse 3, they told him, here's Hezekiah's message. This is a day of great anguish, rebuke, and humiliation. Isn't this what, what we're experiencing, right? We are desperate as we are. And in a day, a woman is in heavy, heavy labor but has no strength left to give birth. See, the enemy's trying to steal our faith that we have no strength to give birth to the new that we have no strength to birth new re the revelation and the breakthrough. See, but that's why we have to shift our focus. And then in verse 4, it says, Perhaps, Lord Yahweh, your God, will take note of all the blasphemous words of the Assyrian commander who was sent by his master, the king of Assyria, to ridicule the living God. May Lord, may, and may Lord Yahweh, your God, rebuke him for the words he spoke. So therefore, we come to ask you to pray for us. The remnant that still survives. We are the remnant. We are the remnant. I'm telling you. We are the remnant. And there's a remnant around the world. And, and Isaiah 5 and 6, it says, Isaiah answered the king's delegation saying, delegation saying, tell your master these words. Here's what the Lord Yahweh says about this matter. And this is, um, this is what he's speaking to all of us. Don't fear or be frightened by the blasphemous words, by COVID, by the rioting, by what the government's saying. Don't fear what they're saying. He said, I will put in him a mindset that will cause him when he hears a certain rumor to flee back to his own country. And when he returns, I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Now, King Sennacherib had heard a report that the king of Ethiopia had allied with Hezekiah and was coming to fight against him. So when he heard it, he sent messengers saying, don't let this God in whom you trust mislead you into thinking that Jerusalem will not fall and be delivered into the hand of the mighty king. You see, there's always going to be a back and forth. And again, that's why you have to be resolute in your faith. And it says, certainly you have heard what the king of Assyria has done to all the land destroying them. Do you think you will be delivered? Now, my question to you is, do you think God will deliver us? Yeah. Where are you at in this? Do you believe that our God is Elohim, that he is our master, that he's our creator God? Do you believe that he is the Lord God of Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord God of the angel armies? He is El Elyon, the most high God who is able to deliver us. He's El Shaddai, and one of the definitions is a God of utter destruction. This is a God in whom we serve. He's not like asleep in the boat. He's, he's awake. Do you really think you'll be delivered? Did any of their gods come to their rescue? Our God always comes to our rescue. In verse 15, when the messengers delivered Sennacherib's message to Hezekiah, he read it and immediately went into the temple of Yahweh. See, this is what we have to do. And he spread it out before the Lord. You're hearing the words. You're hearing the decrees and the false prophet media. You're hearing what they're saying. Spread it out. Go before the Lord. He said, oh, Yahweh, commander of angel armies, the God of Israel, you are enthroned between heaven and earth. <laughs> Please lean down to hear my prayer, Yahweh. Open your eyes and see me here calling out to you. Listen carefully to every blasphemous word. God, hear the enemy's cry. Hear the words of blasphemy that they're saying over our country, over America, that are sent to ridicule and insult you, our living God. Lord Yahweh, you are truly... The Assyrian, it says, Lord Yahweh, truly the Assyrian kings have annihilated all their nations. Yes, there's been COVID. Yes, there's rioting. Yes, there's, there's um, bigotry. Yes, there has been racism. Yes, brutality, violence. But they smashed and burned their gods for they're not truly gods, but mere idols made by human hands shaped from wood and stone. So now our loving God, Yahweh, save us from the Assyrians. Save us from the lies and the deception. Save us. Lord, remove the scales off of people's eyes. Lord, bring them to truth because you love us. You love your people. We're not better than anybody else, but Lord, we choose to obey you so that the whole world will know that you alone are Yahweh, Lord God Almighty.
Hezekiah, this will be a sign for you. This year you will eat only grain that grows of itself. Next year you will eat what comes of that. Then in the third year, life will be normal again. And it goes on to say what will happen. And Judah will be, fl you'll flourish and you'll have deep roots in the ground. I prophesy that over, over America, yes. that we will flourish again and we will have deep roots in the ground of, of honor and mercy yes. and, and destroy the racism even in the church, right? And it says, the fiery passion of Yahweh, commander of the angel armies, will accomplish this. Yeah. Therefore, here's what I say, Yahweh. Here's what I, no, therefore, here is what I, Yahweh, have to say about the king of Assyria. He will neither enter the city, yes. nor shoot one arrow here, yes. nor raise a warrior shield, nor, be, nor build a siege ramp against Jerusalem. Let me pause here. I prophesy, and I know we're in agreement, Marxism will not reign. Communism will not reign. Socialism will not reign. We will not have a culture. We will not have a country that is based on debauchery and lawlessness and rebellion and witchcraft. We will not have it. You will not destroy our country in Jesus' name. And I declare that by the way he came and by that same way he will leave. He will not set foot in the city. There will be no wars. There will be no attacks. There will, our borders, I decree and declare, our borders are protected in Jesus' name. We say, Lord, we decree and declare that you will defend our city and every hidden plot of the enemy will be exposed and uncovered in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your angelic hosts that you have posted around our nation in Jesus' name. We cry out to you, O oh God, and we thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to say, I promise to defend this city and protect it for the sake of my own honor and for the loving sake of David, my, lo my loving servant. And it says, And that night the angel of Yahweh came into the Assyrian camp and he slaughtered 185,000 soldiers. When morning dawned, there was only dead bodies in the camp. Sennacherib, the great king of Assyria, left returning the same way he came, just like what was prophesied, and retreated to Nivea. So, and, and then, then it goes on, which I didn't type out, but he, he died. He was killed by his own people. Now listen, when the Lord calls us to war, he will give us grace to triumph. So here's what the Spirit of God is saying. Don't give in to defeat. When the fear is attacking your mind, shift it with the word. What does the Bible say? For I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. And I decree that the best is yet to come. Don't limit God through fear. And I really want to encourage you to read Psalm 78. Psalm 78 talks all about how they, they limited the Holy One of Israel because of unbelief and doubt. Time and time and down, when you read through the whole psalm, he says, you know, listen, I did this for you, I did this for you, but you rebelled, you turned your back on me, you went the way of pleasure and idolatry. So, so be aware, and then I'm going to close with this, Isaiah 32, and I love this, and the passion, it says, look, a new era has begun, which is what we're in. A king will reign with righteousness and princes, uh, princes according to his justice. Perfect, absolute peace surrounds those whose imaginations are consumed with you. They confidently trust in you. See, when our focus gets on what the world is saying, our imagination sees violence. Our imagination sees defeat. Our imagination sees hopelessness. See, no, God has final say. So the enemy desires to destroy us, to take our, our strength, but don't, don't surrender to fear. So I just want to encourage you today that God loves us and that he wants to bring healing to our nation. When the Israelites came out of the plague, I think it's so interesting, in, in Exodus 15, one of the first names in Exodus 15 uh, that he revealed himself to the Israelites after the plagues was that he was Jehovah Rapha, their healer. And in Exodus 15, it says, if you will diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and listen to him, his commandments and keep foremost in your thoughts and actively obey all his precepts and statutes, he says, none of these diseases will come upon you. So we just can't, we're this plague that's been going on. And, and that's what the Lord is saying to us. Trust him. Yes, things are legitimate. Things are happening out there. But see, God has a shield around us. And God is saying, trust me. Don't look at the giants. COVID is a giant in your life. 
don't look at what the government, don't listen to what the media, we pray and we decree. I don't mean that you put your head in the sand like an ostrich. I mean, but, but don't let it consume your imagination. And so I'm grateful for the faithfulness of our God and that he has given us his strength. He's imparted. We're one with him. See, that's where we get the revelation. That's where we get strength. He develops our faith as we submit to him and we hear his word. We meditate and we chew and we regurgitate on the word. The Bible says day and night, not once every three days. Day and night. We Right now, it is so critical that we know the word, that we become people of the word. And that we rejoice in him, we worship. Worship is very, very important. Our sound, our decrees. But the joy of the Lord is the fruit of the spirit. And that's what happens. We're not defeated. We're not to walk in fear. We're not to walk in, in, in surrender. Surrender to the lies of the enemy. We're not prisoners of war. The Lord will say to us, who has bewitched you? There's that spirit of witchcraft that has been released in our nation. Don't let it bewitch you. I said, Lord, this is a temos. Let our eyes radiate with your light, not fear, not darkness. The shadow of the Almighty overshadows us, not the shadow of fear and defeat. Amen. So, Lord, we just thank you that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us that we are a people of power and might. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the spirit of the living God within us. We thank you, Father, we are fortified. We thank you, Lord God, that, that we see through your lens, oh God, and that, that, Lord, you love us with an everlasting love. And your mercies over us are new every morning. And that even if we've blown it, when we all do, we repent, but say, Lord, I want more of you. I want to grow in you. I want to be that person that's that single-eyed focus. And if that's you, just pray. Just ask the Lord right now. Listen, this isn't a message of defeat. This is a message of triumph. And that he loves you so very much. Of course, we always want to give everybody an opportunity to accept the Lord. But I, I want you to know that, that the Lord loves you, but I also want you to know that he wants you to understand that fear is not your God. Fear is not your portion. So now I speak to that spirit of fear that's been just tormenting people. And I bind you and I render you ineffective and powerless and I loose the shalom of God. Lord, release hunger for your word. Remove the scales off of people's eyes. And Lord, I just thank you even right now that you are healing people. You are Jehovah Rapha. You're the God who heals, and you're the God of comfort. And Lord God, I'm even going to take it even further. You're healing our nation. We call those things which be not as though they are. The enemy may be saying one thing, but we, we redirect that. We're rewriting the decrees like Esther did because the enemy wanted to take her out, but she had the signet ring of authority, and she rewrote the decrees. The evil, wicked decrees that Haman wrote that annihilate the Jews. Well, we're rewriting the evil, wicked decrees to annihilate America in Jesus' name to shut the churches down. We say no to that. We will be in full operation, 100% capacity in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we just say let God arise and our enemies be scattered. We worship you, O oh God. We are a victorious people. And we just thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, we bless you. You are free in Christ. It is for freedom Jesus has set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.